As you might have guessed, I'm a pretty big map nerd, so you can imagine I was pretty surprised when I found a new island in the North Atlantic that I previously didn't know about. Now I already knew about Bermuda, I knew about Jan Mayen, I even knew about Ireland, but I did not know about Rockall. Did you? If not, I don't blame you. I mean, technically it's not even an island, it's more of a cliff really, or an islet if you like. There has never been a Rockall empire, nor a Rockall city, but there has been an inhabitant. Yes, inhabitant, singular, not plural, not counting the seabirds whose shit you can see from afar. But we'll get to that later. The inhabitant, I mean, not the bird shit. That's just bird shit. Not very interesting, I fear. So, Rockall lies about 301 kilometers or 187 miles west of Scotland and 700 kilometers or 430 miles south of Iceland. Its highest point stands about 17 meters or 56 feet above the sea. It's quite possible some Viking or Gaelic sailors might have spotted it back in the day and correctly concluded that it wouldn't make a very comfortable home. It has been speculated that the Scottish Gaelic name Rokal may derive from the Old Norse Rokolor, which means something like the bald head in the foaming sea, which, when you look at it, makes a lot of sense. Anyways, Rokol first appears on maps in a Dutch sailing chart from the late 16th century, where it is called Rokol. Even so, for hundreds of years, while the European powers established their colonial empires, Nobody bothered to claim it, because a. it was pretty much worthless, and b. it's really difficult to set foot on the island even today. It wasn't until the year 1810 when the first recorded landing on Rockall was conducted by Royal Navy officer Basil Hull, along with a small landing party. The island was more thoroughly charted on several occasions for scientific reasons in the years to come, for example, prior to the laying of the transatlantic telegraph cable, when the seabed had to be surveyed. But it wasn't until the Cold War that the British Empire thought of annexing the islet into its empire. Why now? Because as Britain was about to test its first guided nuclear missile in the North Atlantic, which would pass over Rockall, the British Admiralty feared the Soviets might use this unclaimed land to set up some sort of observation or monitoring station, and so in April 1955, the British Empire annexed the islet. A flagpole was hammered into place and the Union Jack was raised on Rockall as the men saluted. A brass plaque was cemented into place, announcing that Rockall was claimed in the name of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Thus, the British Empire expanded for the very last time in history. In 1971, Rockall was incorporated into the district of Harris in the county of Inverness in Scotland. This secured the British position as owner of the seabed in the area, for 12 nautical miles in all directions, along with all potential resources within, such as minerals and oil. This claim has been internationally disputed mainly by Ireland, Iceland and Denmark, and so to further cement its claim, an inhabitant was placed on Rockall, namely former SAS soldier Tom McLean, who lived on Rockall for about 40 days. In 1997, the environmental organization Greenpeace occupied Rockall, proclaiming it independent as the new global state of Waveland and offered citizenship to anyone willing to take their Pledge of Allegiance. I guess this is as close to a Rockall empire that we'll get. The UK responded by stating that Rockall is British territory, it is part of Scotland and anyone is free to go there and can stay as long as they please. That pretty much concludes the history of Rockall. A special thanks to my Patreon supporters who helped making these videos possible. Night King, Andrew Vasilenko, Anthony Appleyard, Ed Atherton, Yuli and Gasso.